Welcome back everybody, me and old Ruger here. We're heading off to go get some non-ethanol fuel and it's very important for what's coming. So it's a few days out and we're checking the forecast and we have what looks like a potential hurricane coming directly toward us. And I like to prepare early, y'all know this. It's what I always do. I've spent too many times in my life fighting everybody at the gas station or only to show up to the store. They're out of everything because I waited the last minute. So I stopped doing that years ago. So we're gonna go grab some non-ethanol fuel in my big 35 gallon can. That will be used in my big generator should we need it. Seen I also just grab my little chainsaw gas can, just put a fresh mix of oil in there. We need to add another gallon of fuel to that. That is something I always try to have ready for hurricanes. Trees typically go down and well, you may need that chainsaw. And the other thing that I really like to do, go ahead and top your vehicle off. Have one vehicle at a minimum that is fully topped off. You never know if that hurricane may shift and go toward friends or family, and you've got to do a little traveling to go help somebody out. All right, so I'm pulling out of our local gas station here and just picked up some non-ethanol. First of all, isn't it frustrating? Are y'all experiencing where your card cuts off before $100? So now I can't hardly fill up. I only needed to put a couple more gallons. It's just aggravating to have to get down out of the truck, do everything again. For some reason, either it's my card or these stations, I can't get more than $100. And that's extremely frustrating when I'm getting diesel because I have to get, well, two, $300 worth of diesel sometimes. I don't know if it's a local thing or a credit card thing. I also just paid $4.29 a gallon for non-ethanol. So I'm curious to hear what it is in your area. And I want to let y'all in a little tip. I met with my CPA and did our taxes this past season. And she told me to save all of our non-ethanol receipts, which I already do anyways, because, well, that's kind of a farm expense and channel expense. But she says now, at least in the state of Florida, you see, we get taxed a road tax for non-ethanol. And most people burn non-ethanol fuel in boats and off-road vehicles. And apparently there's some sort of tax credit that they can apply for now. So if you're buying a lot of non-ethanol fuel, save your receipts check with your CPA you may can get a road tax credit back assuming your state charges that by the way let me show y'all something one of my favorite purchases recently now they're kind of expensive I bought them off of Amazon Rhino USA automatic roll-up ratchet straps so I love these things I hate fighting with ratchet straps all you do is take the hook out put it wherever you want to hook and it's ready to go you can just pull tight, but whenever you're done with something, all you do is press this button and it rolls everything up in a nice neat package for you. Like I said, a bit pricey, but I will never go back to regular ratchet straps again. These things are awesome and they're worth every bit of money. I bought the one inch versions. I think I'm gonna try to buy the two inch versions as well for some heavy duty tie downs. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in these. I love these for carrying stuff around. Not sponsored, bought them with my own money. That about got hairy real quick. <laughs> Normally I go down backwards. For some reason today I thought I'd go down forward. Don't do that. All right, so it's day two of hurricane prep. As of right now, the update's showing that we're gonna get anywhere from a cat one to a cat three, depending on who you listen to, and the path showing directly at us. Now we're still two days out. A lot can change in two days, but I do not wait to the last minute to get prepared. So we just got an additional 30 gallons of fuel. I used to stock more fuel than that, but I don't anymore because I've prepared us in other ways. We have been trying to develop our property over the last many, many years to be a little more self-sufficient, a little more prepared, because you just don't ever know what may happen in this world. And something I haven't really talked about on the channel, and the reason I'm not, no longer as concerned with non-ethanol fuel, is because of this big guy right here. So we bit the bullet and went ahead and put a 500 gallon propane tank in a few months back. So back in the day, we're like, hey, we don't really want to look at a big ugly propane tank. Let's put a little one by the house. But as crazy as things are becoming, we wanted to have enough fuel on hand to run our dual fuel generator so I can run for days and days and days with a tank that size. And you just don't never know what the world may bring. We literally have a few years of propane in that tank to do our daily water heater usage as well as our cooking so we're stubbed right out of the ground for propane for my generator and there is the generator hookup going into the house itself 
but I'm no longer even as concerned now because, well, let me show you something. And believe it or not, we come home not before last and had we had a horrible storm come through. The local sheriff's department was calling it microburst. They had to put people out all over the counties all night long. The nastiest, quickest moving storm I've seen in a long time come through while we was at a restaurant with some friends and it blew stuff everywhere around this yard. I actually just finally found some stuff I've been looking for. Horrible winds, not power out for a few hours, and it was so nice to finally be able to use my EcoFlow Delta Pros. Y'all see that I do portable power station reviews on the channel. I am all for y'all getting some sort of backup power. I don't care who you get. I really don't. Protect yourself. So we walked right inside the house. I'll show you a clip right here. Kick those on. We was able to kick on our one and a half horsepower 240 volt pump. We took a hot shower and we were getting ready to kick the central AC on with those battery units. Yes, they'll do it. I've shown that before and go to bed. All right, so we just got home and watched an extremely nasty thunderstorm come through on radar. We have no power. This is a couple days before we're expecting a hurricane or whatever it may be. Power is out. So I've already started hooking up our EcoFlow Delta Pro units. That's what they're in here for. To the generator plug, here is our dog. He just rode out this thunderstorm with a lot of lightning. He's scared to death. And as you can see, we have the main power on, which we're about to throw off because, well, there's no power. All right, and we're gonna throw on the generator switch that I have right here and breaker. Power these units on. This is what they're here for to save us in situations like this. All right, so here we are running a one and a half horsepower well pump so we can get showers tonight. You can see the wattage it's pulling right there. It only pull it for just a few seconds while the pump is engaged. Oh, it's 3,000 watts. All right, y'all, I don't know what to say. Always be prepared. I could care less what you get, I really could. Full on the wall solar, portable power stations, gas generators, I really don't care. Be prepared is the name of the game. The, today was literally a 10% chance of rain. We just had one of the nastiest thunderstorms of the year blow through. I've got stuff everywhere, it's dark. I can't even see it, but I've got stuff blown everywhere. No power, another severe thunderstorm on the way. And the only reason we're gonna be comfortable tonight is because we have solar power out here in the shop. It can run all night, we're great. We have solar power at the house. Depending on how much we use the AC, it may run all night, it may not, but we're gonna be comfortable. We just took hot showers. That is the name of the game. So what do you think about that? Technology is getting pretty amazing, right? Literally two batteries in our pantry can run our entire house. Again, it won't do it all night long with central AC, but it will for sure run our house all night long, running fans, freezer, refrigerator, things such as that, protecting our necessities. The other reason I'm no longer as concerned about the fuel and generators, well, now the shop's over here on solar. Although my solar's not where I want it to be. I wanna get some more panels, and I really need to get a couple more batteries so I can run a couple of days, should it be, say, very cloudy after a hurricane goes through. But even though we knocked power out the other night, the shop never felt it because it's technically off-grid right now. It's running 100% on battery power. I come out here, freezers, refrigerators were running, the shop never knew that we lost grid power. All right, so here's something Tiffany and I are gonna focus on today, our storm shelter, which uh, needs some weeding very badly. It's growing up all around it. The poor shelter also needs some attention. I got some paint flaking off, it needs to be painted. But this is a solid wood wall storm shelter that I built off of engineered plans. I did a full build series on this. Y'all really should check it out. It's like 20 something videos. It's like a log cabin style built and then it's wrapped in three quarter ply inside and out. So there is no airspace in the walls. They're six inches thick, solid wood, laminated, screwed, everything. I literally honestly don't think you could shoot a, a rifle bullet through this wall. It is that robust. This is plenty good to ride out hurricanes. No wood framed house even remotely compares to the strength of this right here. And we did this because, well, there's gonna be times that we have to come out here, ride out tornadoes, and for sure hurricanes. So we built a big enough shelter that we could stay here for hours. So I wanna come out here and check things like, does the AC still work? All right, so if you're new to the channel or storm shelter, here it is. It definitely needs another coat of paint. Those are just knots from plywood that's bled through. Work on that later. 
We put us a futon out here that can fold down into a bed in case we're going to be out here for quite a few hours. That is not uncommon with a hurricane. And this room is big enough to bring our two dogs in and me and Tiffany to, well, attempt to sleep on that or just kind of sit here and play on our phones, really. It's not that people often forget about. Well, it's important to have some way to go to the restroom in here because things may happen and you can't just go outside in a raging hurricane. So we keep kitty litter in this bucket for emergencies. Over here I built some shelves. We'll keep some water, first aid, a little bit of medicine to make you feel better, wipes, all kinds of stuff right here. We gotta work on this today. I gotta finish putting the wires up. I mounted a day and night vision camera to the outside. That'll give us some peace of mind so we can kind of watch everything while we're in here. It'll run off the TV. We've got a local station antenna up there so we can kind of watch the news. We keep a weather radio in here. And then we have power that comes all the way over from the shop. And the cool thing is the power feeding this right now is coming from solar. So technically this is already off grid and prepared for a hurricane. Now, should something happen to the solar over there for some reason, you don't want to be trapped out here with no way to ventilate the room. By the way, we can kick on a fan right there and pull fresh air into the room. That's very important and be dangerous in here without good fresh oxygen. But should something happen and we lose the solar power at the shop, I am going to now stage my EcoFlow Delta II Max. This is a big 2000 watt hour unit. It'll be perfect for out here. Even Ruger says, huh? So we can charge all of our phones from the front. That's something we'll most likely need to do. And then it's got a bunch of power outlets on the back, 110 volt. And I need to go ahead and plug this in, make sure everything's nice and charged up. And this will be our emergency backup. So from the AC to the force ventilation to the TV to see what's going on, we can plug everything into this right here, which is great should something happen on the outside. And we don't have to go outside in the storm to try to get power back to this room. So overall, it's a decent sized shelter. It's perfect for riding out hurricanes or running out here if a storm or tornado or something pops up. We spend a lot of time out here in the spring, really, whenever we get all of our tornado warnings. This is not a sponsored video. Did not get paid. I did not receive a product to talk about this, but I do want to let y'all know, EcoFlow is running a disaster preparedness sale right now. I just seen they announced the dates. I think it's all the way through September 27th. They're running some pretty awesome sales on a lot of their equipment, like those Delta Pros that runs a house or a Delta 2 Max or a smaller unit. If you're interested in their stuff, now's the time to get it while there's a big sale like that. I'll put some links down in the description. The stuff's been super reliable. It comes with a sweet like five year warranty on it. Units like the Delta II Max or the Delta Pro are expandable. I think you can do the Delta Pros up to like 25 kilowatt hours. So huge system that would legitimately run our house for a long period of time if we build it out that big. And like I've told you, I don't care what you get. Get something, whether it be small to run your medical equipment, CPAP, something medium sized to run freezers and refrigerators, protect your investment give you a peace of mind, get you some sort of backup device. Living in a hurricane state like this, we have multiple. We have backups for our backup. I have learned my lessons many times throughout the years, being without power, without water, can't bathe for days. I hated it, and we've always swore we were going to set ourselves up with our new house to where if a storm hits, we're still going to live like normal. All right, so we got a little bit of work to do in here. Tiffany's about to come out and clean this thing up, freshen it up, get us some blankets and stuff out here. The whole point is to have this room ready to go so whenever it's time to come out, we're not setting everything up the day of the hurricane. It's already prepped and ready to go. All right, I'm not gonna sit here and fret over this not looking all professional, but I just wanna get these wires up out of the way. TV is working. Well, sadly, my camera is not working and it worked perfectly fine the last time we come out here. We had a really bad lightning strike the other day that have hit, I guess, the house, the property right here. And I'm wondering if it got this camera. We lost a bunch of lights inside, it trip breakers. Um, we've noticed we've lost several things. It burned up something of Tiffany's too that's no longer any good. That may be what happened. And sadly, I don't have a backup camera. I will be ordering me an extra camera and a backup camera at that. Bummer. I sure wanted to be able to look outside. All right, well, at least we can get local channels and check a few other things. Let's keep moving forward. 
This is why you prepare early, because you find problems. Let's double check our weather radio. Protected water is choppy. Showers and thunderstorms. Tuesday night, tropical storm conditions possible. There we go. Tuesday, tropical storm conditions possible. And we're gonna head in the house and finish charging up the Delta Pros, and I'm gonna show you my setup there and uh, get all that prepped and ready because if we come out here to stay in the shelter, chances are we know we're gonna lose power and we could be out here eight hours or more. You just don't ever know how long these storms sit on you. We'll go ahead and swap the house over to be running off of the power station so we don't have to worry about any surges or potential damage to the equipment side. It's already overrunning on our battery backup system and it should be nice and smooth. Freezers and refrigerators and everything will still keep rocking right along. All right, so we're gonna try something. I've had a lot of y'all ask for us to live stream from the storm shelter anytime we're out here, but the internet is horrible. It just does not go through that wall very good. You got a metal roof, a metal door, but we just had a very generous viewer send us in a full house mesh system, the Orby system. I've already got it set up on the porch and all throughout the house and it does awesome. So I'm gonna bring one of the satellites out here and see if it can work this far away and connect back with the main unit. I don't know. All right, it's powering up. Maybe we might can actually get some Wi-Fi here and I need to close the door to double check all this. All right, so now the real test. We'll see if we lose Wi-Fi and we'll run a speed test while we're in here. <laughs> check that out. We're getting 53 megs down. That is plenty good. For us to stream TV out here and news and everything else. And look, we're getting, oh wow, 30, 36 up, 37 megabits per second. That is way more than I need to live stream from out here. And Josh, the guy who sent this in, thank you so much. I had no idea it was going to get me internet all the way out here. I was preparing to dig and run a line out here, but now I have five full bars of Wi-Fi signal, even with this metal door closed. Sweet. I've already did a generator prep video. I'll put that up here if you're watching on YouTube and uh, go back and watch that. So I'm very confident and comfortable right now with our generators. I just did full services on them, got fresh gas in them, check the carbs. I've got spare carbs, all that good stuff. So we're not gonna go over that again in this video because the last time it looked like we were gonna get a hurricane, I covered all that in great detail. So you may wanna check that episode out. All right, so if we come in the pantry in here, these are my dual EcoFlow Delta Pros. Plug both of these right in to this generator inlet box that I have right here. By the way, I've got a video on the full wire up and test of these units if you want to see it. And believe it or not, both of those together puts out 240 volts and actually ran our central AC unit. All right, so it's the next morning, the day before the storm, and I waited till today to do some pretty major preparations because I was thinking the storm was gonna shift further east. It started shifting yesterday, and I was expecting it to keep doing that. Woke up today, it has not really shifted at all overnight. We're still very much in the danger zone. They're calling for some pretty high winds here, according to NOAA. The eye is gonna go just east of us. Well, you don't know, we're still a day out. We're, it could easily shift right back to us. So one huge concern I've always had is the size of our gigantic porch roof. We wanted the porches, we knew this was gonna be a little bit of a risk, when you have porches this big, well, it's just an umbrella. It catches wind. And I've always been concerned about if we get a major hurricane. By the way, this was just upgraded to a three. They think it might go to a four. So it's a major hurricane. If we were to just catch the eye wall perfectly, there's a chance of roof lift right here. And we've experienced it once before with a building like this, but we took a direct hit from a tornado. You can't really build for a tornado. So let's climb up here and let me show you where my concern is and where I've seen a failure point before with these buildings. So these metal trusses are bolted straight through this six by six, and it's actually an extremely strong connection. Problem is in major uplift in winds, I have seen these posts split before and the bolts pull out. Uh, a couple of them did that whenever our barn got hit by a tornado. The rest actually stayed in, but I've always been curious about how can our hurricane strap over. So if this does try to split the post and pull out, the roof doesn't pull off. So I was trying to think about how to do straps. I don't think that'll look good. And we're at an angle up here so a strap wouldn't sit on top of the truss properly. And then a friend of mine who's in construction had a great idea. He said, why don't you drill through the post this direction, run another half inch carriage bolt. And what this is essentially gonna do is sandwich the post together really tight, 
Plus it puts a bolt all the way through that if these were to try to start pulling up, well, they're gonna make contact with that bolt. So then the post would technically have to split in two different directions to cause a failure point for your truss to pull out. I think that's a really good idea. It's gonna take me a while to do all these posts today, but I think that's what I'm gonna go after this morning just to make me sleep better tonight in case I wake up in the morning and this storm has changed directions and is coming more towards us. Right now they're already showing tropical storm force winds here anyways and all it's got to do is barely shift i'm talking one county over and we're we're in the bad stuff we're in the really bad stuff All right, so all posts are through bolted now. Whether that actually helps or not, it sure seems like it would. And I didn't remove enough material that uh, I should have changed the integrity of the post. But sandwiching it back that direction has got to help. I mean, yeah. I should also mention talking about the barn failure that we had when one got hit by a tornado. That was a different barn kit than this, and it was really the installer's fault. That was back before I was installing a lot of my own stuff. The posts were only about two foot in the ground, we discovered. One bag of concrete around them, and the installer did not stake the post with rebars. Not like it would have even have mattered with one bag of concrete. So the installation was horrible. Done all kinds of wrong. Person wasn't licensed, insured, don't even know where they're at anymore. So nothing we can do about that old barn, except learn from it and try to improve upon the things that we have now. Well, my phone just lit up with the Amber Alert sound, giving me the national hurricane warning that it said to expect damaging winds here within 36 hours. I'm still waiting on a new path update, but being we just got that warning, obviously, well, we're still in the danger zone here. So what I'm gonna do is wait for this afternoon's update, maybe first thing in the morning before I take down our solar panels. If you haven't seen this, I specifically built these to be modular and to break down for hurricanes. So I'm gonna cut to a couple clips here out of the video where I built this. You may wanna watch it, it's a pretty cool little series, but they're easily removable. You can take each section off in about four to five minutes, six panels at a time. Two people can handle that, although it's a bit heavy, but it's movable at that point. And we can store that inside of our shop back here that's well supposedly engineered for 150 mile an hour winds and that's where we'll put everything because the last thing that we want is something we're depending on after a hurricane you don't know are you without power for hours are you without power for days i want my solar back up and running and i don't want it out here catching wind or getting damaged because i'm depending on this stuff whenever we come right back up so other things that I'll do in the morning whenever I see the last of the path, I've got a few hours I can get ready tomorrow before, well, the hurricane's ever set to arrive because it's supposed to be tomorrow night. Things like these drums that can blow around, I'll run a big ratchet strap around them. Things like my wheelbarrow, I either flip over or fill full of water. And then I'll go around the barn and I'll find anything that's lightweight or potential projectile. I don't want that going into vehicle windows or just winding up on the neighbors somewhere. And I've showed you all this before. Water is your friend when you're expecting storms like this. So if you have big containers out here that could potentially blow around, either fill them up with water, which is the easiest thing because you can dump it, or fill them up with sand. So now I'll go out here with all my coolers, fill them up with water, get them all out flat on the ground so they don't get blown off and damaged or wind up becoming projectiles themselves. Something else I need to do, y'all caught on to this the other night. I need to glue down these post caps right here. I actually had a really nasty thunderstorm come through the other night. I showed y'all clips earlier where we lost power and these tops were blown off everywhere. So there's no way they're gonna survive a hurricane. So I'm gonna use some flashing material, which is really sticky and strong, putting all the corners. I gotta start thinking about any little thing like this because now's the time to get it. It's too late tomorrow.
I don't know there's much point in recording anything else. It's all gonna be relatively boring stuff for the rest of the day. Go get the tarp off of Ruger's kennel. I'll probably do that first thing in the morning. I have to go shore up the netting that's around the chicken coop. I want to put some boards over that so it doesn't rip and blow off. Got to get the flag and other things like that down and just walk around the yard and find anything again that could become a projectile. And tomorrow morning, if we get up and it looks like we're still right in the path of all these winds, well then pull the tractor and some other stuff inside the barn, rearrange. Got to get those solar panels down and uh, then just kind of ride the storm out. If we do wind up taking a relatively nasty hit, we'll record, we may live stream out to y'all. Thank you everybody that's thinking about us and for sure keep everybody in your thoughts and prayers that's gonna be impacted by this. South of us right now is gonna get it and don't forget they're still healing from a bad hurricane. They've already been hit and they're not even rebuilt yet. It looks like they're about to get another one coming into the same area. Catch y'all in the next video.